r slash ask reddit who are some of the most badass people in history leo major dude turned down his first distinguished combat medal because he didn't like the general who was supposed to give it to him all good though he earned two more a movie about him would be called too unrealistic if they made one that dude was basically canadian solid snake christopher lee the actor behind count dooku Seruman and many others was a certified badass, spy and Nazi killer in World War II, had a couple heavy metal albums as well. He witnessed the last public execution in France. Wells Crowther, aka the man in the red bandana, I'm sure most of us have thought about what it must have been like in the World Trade Center on 9-11 and it must have been debilitatingly petrifying. He was 24 years old working on the 104th floor as an equities trader, made his way down to the sky lobby of the south tower and found a badly burned woman, carried her down 17 floors, then went back upstairs to help guide others to the only possible stairwell, stayed up there helping others and working with the fire department until the towers collapsed, he's responsible for saving around 20 lives and died a damn hero. His alma mater Boston College has a red bandana game every football season in his honor. Decals on the players jerseys and the crowd all wears them. It is a really cool sight to see. Unnamed Viking from the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066. By the time the bulk of the English army had arrived, the Vikings on the west side were either slain or fleeing across the bridge. The English advance was then delayed by the need to pass through the choke point presented by the bridge itself. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle has it that a giant Norse axe man, possibly armed with a Dane axe, blocked the narrow crossing and single-handedly held up the entire English army. The story is that this axeman cut down up to 40 Englishmen and was defeated only when an English soldier floated under the bridge in a half barrel and thrust his spear through the planks in the bridge, mortally wounding the axe man. Yup, his manhood was injured. I'm not even kidding. Olgov Kiev. This lady lost her husband and when it was proposed she marry his murderer, she was like sure, send a delegation over so we can talk this out and they came, she had them dropped in a pit and buried them alive, then she had another party of men sent to talk about the marriage, and they came, she said, hey, it was a long journey, why not come relax in this bathhouse and they did, she set the bathhouse on fire when they were in it, then Olga went and sent the Dravillians another message. Hey bring out the booze I'm coming to mourn my husband's death in your city. She came. She mourned. She got the Dravillians drunk. And she had them killed by her followers while they were drunk off their asses. Olga went and got her army. Laid siege to the place where her husband was killed for a year. Then told them I'm willing to forgive and forget if you guys give me a bunch of birds and the Dravillians did. They turned the birds into mini matches by attaching sulfur to their legs. And then released them. Set the city on fire. Freaking savage. Snolga is my favorite answer to this age old question. Also belongs in one of those revenge subs. How many of those are there? She should go in one of the big ones. Michael Collins. Showed up 7 minutes late to negotiations for the Anglo-Irish Treaty in 1922. And when he was corrected said you've had 700 years. I'll take my 7 minutes. There is a great self-titled biopic about him starring Liam Neeson. John Paul Jones ducking legendary pirate. He is my favorite lesser known American. Crazy bastard sailed all the way to England to fight. As if the thousands of British soldiers already in the colonies weren't enough for him to fight. Alan Turing. Chinese pirate Queen Qingxi led a huge pirate fleet of up to 400 ships and basically robbed and murdered whatever and whoever the duck she wanted. Her word was law if you were on her crew any disobedience got you beheaded on the spot. She kicked the dongs off of the Chinese navy. She whooped British and Portuguese bounty hunters. Terrorized villages killing the men and selling the women and children into slavery when their ransoms weren't paid. When she finally started losing fights to a technologically superior Portuguese navy she cashed out. Took her loyal bloodthirsty pirate army to the Chinese government and suggested that they pardon her and her crew of all crimes and not try to confiscate any of their loot or they were gonna do one more big bloody crime starting right here. She ran a brothel gambling house into her old age and lived in luxury and power. Not only that, but she started out as a prostitute and maneuvered her way into the position of pirate queen after her husband, 
the pirate leader Priya, was killed. She was a badass female at a time and a place where women were almost always subservient. Queen Baudica led an Isni uprising against the Roman army. Reposting a comment I had on a similar thread a while back. How has no one said Giles Corey yet? He was accused of witchcraft along with his wife Martha Corey during the Salem witch trials. After being arrested, Corey refused to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. He was subjected to execution by pressing in an effort to force him to plead, the only example of such a sanction in American history, but instead died after two days of torture, as a result of his refusal to plead. On the 17th of September, Sheriff George Corwin led Corey to her pit in the open field beside the jail and in accordance with the above process, before the court and witnesses, stripped Giles of his clothing, laid him on the ground in the pit, and placed boards on his chest. Six men then lifted heavy stones, placing them one by one, on his stomach and chest. Giles Corey did not cry out, let alone make a plea. After two days, Giles was asked three times to plead innocent or guilty to witchcraft. Each time he replied, more weight, double quote. A big part of this was that if he chose to plea, his children would lose the rights of inheritance to his property, so he remained silent in order to preserve their inheritance. Theodore Roosevelt. Janusz Korczak. He was a military doctor during World War I. A completely committed amazing pedagogue and the headmaster of a Jewish children's home during World War II in the Warsaw Ghetto. He was given several chances to flee to Palestine. Instead electing to stay with the children. Eventually he accompanied them all the way into the gas chamber. To make sure they didn't have to die alone and scared. It's one level of badassery to kill for your cause. It's a whole different level of badassery to walk towards certain death for several years. Endure hardship and starvation. Not for some grand cause. Not even to trade your life for someone else's. But only because you feel so much love towards your fellow man. To think it's your duty to make sure they won't have to die alone. Harriet Tubman. Woman was ducking badass. Andre the Giant. The guy could drink a case full of beer, then go out in the ring and throw his opponent around like a rag doll. Didn't he drink 41 beers in one sitting or something? He is a giant who can't get drunk. I did read somewhere that he once drank 119 beers in 6 hours. I still have a hard time believing it was that minute, but he could definitely handle liquor like nobody else. Joseph Bros Tito. Industrialized Yugoslavia. Founded non-aligned movement and told Joseph Stalin stop sending assistance to kill me. We have 5 failed assassins. The next one of yours we find it'll send one of ours. And we'll only need one. Along with that survived the Russian Revolution War. Snuck back to Yugoslavia on freight train. Fought the monarchy. Fought Nazis and then made Yugoslavia the most prosperous nation in the Eastern Bloc. Hiro Onoda was a Japanese soldier in World War II who didn't believe Japan would ever have surrendered to the Allies. So he spent about 30 years on an island in the Pacific where he had been instructed to wage guerrilla warfare on the inhabitants during the war. It was only in 1974 when his former commanding officer was summoned to officially relieve him of his duty. There were search parties and everything. At times instructed to shoot a kill because he was still attacking local farmers. He survived all of them without ever being found and lived on his own in the jungle for most of the time after his group was either killed or captured. Nellie Bly went undercover and endured abuse to cover neglect and abuse in Blackwell's asylum. Went to Mexico and called out the dictator for going after the press and oppressing his people and then fleed was exiled out of Mexico because of that. Traveled the world in 70 something days to prove you could travel the world in 80 days or less. Based off of the Jules Verne novel, also did reporting on the Eastern European Front in World War 1 and also was arrested after she was mistaken for a British spy. And she did so much more. Such a badass and one of my historical heroes. Diogenes. I've never heard of someone who cared about so little. I think my favorite story of Diogenes, which obviously could very well be fake but man it's good. It's, Alexander the Great found the philosopher looking attentively at a pile of human bones. Diogenes explained, I am searching for the bones of your father but cannot distinguish them from those of a slave. Daniel Inouye, the late senator from Hawaii, he's one of the most decorated officers of all time. Sophie Scholl. Whoa, 
you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.